All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are. This is Josh Michaelis, and I'm back on the Houndsman XP podcast, and I'm joined by my good friend, Mr. Steve Yant. That's a name y'all are going to be pretty familiar with. Steve, how are you, buddy? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing good. Steve has joined me here in Sykeston, Missouri, not far from his house. We're getting this recorded. Steve, I've been wanting to do this a long time. Me and you've been pretty good buddies for quite a while, and you are we're going to go through all the all the stuff that you want because i don't know it all it's a bunch <laughs> and so i know the national championship trip and then numerous numerous other things and we'll go through all that later but i'm going to put you on the spot early because i want to talk about zeb3 and i know you hunted zeb3 for a while and we've talked about that at clubhouses and at random hunts and anytime we get together I want to just start out by you telling me what, because everybody knows what, we just got done with Zach McBee on the Joy side, and he's hunting a dog out of Zeb 3, and there's been so many good dogs out of Zeb 3, but what was Zeb 3 actually like? Um, Zeb 3 was a freak of nature. Uh, he was a dog that didn't matter where you took him to, what time of the year it was, when he had coon trend on his mind, you weren't going to beat him. I don't care what you was hunting. Uh, I've seen him. We showed him one night. Me and Jeff Travis showed him to some guys up in Illinois. And he treed nine singles and caught two deer that night. <laughs> <laughs> Run them down and caught them out in the middle of some big fields. That's not easy to do, especially when you treat nine coons in between them. <laughs> and he was eight years old at the time. He was older whenever you got your hands yeah, on him. Yeah, he was eight years old when I got him. Uh, he'd been swapped around a bunch. Jeff had went to hunting Homer, and Zeb 3 had been down at Kitty's house. They didn't get along real good, and he hadn't been had nothing done with him in a while when I got him. And I got him back and got him in shape and got him hunted up, and he actually won the pro race that year. Yeah, yeah, I remember because he was yeah he was eight when he done that yeah and that's hard to do on a that's hard on an eight-year-old dog but he was just uh he was one of them dogs he struck i don't think he really babbled he you'd get him out of the truck and i would always tie him up jeff told me to do this he said tie him up to the bumper and act like you're doing something and kill some time and let him get the wind in and he said when you turn him loose he will leave out there running something and he would do it uh if you turned him loose 20 times he'd do it 19. was he gamey all the time did he die gamey i see oh yeah i'm <laughs> sure i'm sure he did uh he just man he could tree, he could tree coons he could tree any kind of coon he'd be running deer and people would think well he's fixing to leave the world and he'd just sit down tree and then he might tree four or five in a row yeah and just beat people to death hunting good dogs hmm i always want i never got a chance to hunt with him but he gets a lot of credit for the stud pin which he deserves i mean there's been a lot of amazing dogs out of him but i don't think he gets enough credit for how good of actual coon dog that he was no uh the first time i ever hunted with him i was hunting a female named i not for al nunnaman mm -hmm. and larry weaver and me and jeff travis jeff was hunting a silk female that he won everything in the world with both of them them two females were the hottest thing going at that time and we drew adam joiner hunting zeb three at a pro hunt down in alabama and zeb was about i don't know 18 19 month old and we hunted 40 some minutes and zeb had treed three coons and me and jeff hadn't made a tree yet with <laughs> what everybody thought was the two best dogs in the world at that time and uh, he beat our eyeballs out and we called J.C. Ellis. Jeff was, that's who Jeff was hunting for at the time. And we got Adam to price him. And uh, anyhow, there was some stuff got back to J.C. And he wound up not buying him. I was going to get to hunt him. And then about three or four years later, we were sitting at the Brutus Showcase. And Jeff come leading Zeb 3 in. He had won every night that week, scoring mm -hmm. six and 700. And... Uh, jc asked me he said steve he said is that the dog you tried to get me to buy and i said that's him he said oh no <laughs> <laughs> he wanted he wanted him adam, adam priced him to us for 7500 i think it was yeah 
So you could have bought JC could have bought Zeb three for seventy five hundred when he's eighteen nineteen months old. Yeah. Oh. And you know the dog never really. You know Jeff pushed him pretty hard a couple years, but he was older then. You know to me that dog got wasted a lot of years mm-hmm. where there's no telling. A dog like him today, not bragging, I could win a hundred thousand a year with. Yeah. And do it pretty easily. Well, we'll get into the the money that's in the hunch right now. We're going to get into that a little a little bit later. But how'd you get your start? You've been down here around Sykeston pretty much your whole life, ain't you? Yeah, I've lived here. Uh, actually, right now I live in a house my dad built when I was a kid. Uh, I've lived around here all my life. Yeah. Who started uh, your coon hunting? My brother Randy. He's my oldest. There's four of us boys. He's my oldest brother. He. Uh, I don't know. I was ten or eleven years old, and I remember I kept bugging him wanting to go. And he told Dad one night, he said, I'm going to take the little pecker head so he'll shut up. He said, I'm tired of hearing him. My my two brothers, Randy's the oldest and I'm the youngest. My two brothers between us, they had went with him, and I think they went an hour or two, and they decided coon hunting wasn't for them. Yeah. But I finally went with him one night, and after the first night, I knew that was what I wanted to do. Did your brother have pretty good dogs? Uh, pretty good at the time. Uh, he he got into competition hunting a little later on and uh he figured out pretty quick that you need a little bit better dog when mm-hmm. you start going to competition hunts when did you start getting into the hunts oh i was about the first hunt i ever went to i went to a ukc hunt at kinder missouri with bucky kimbrell mm-hmm. i was 13 bucky was raised here in sykeston he yep. moved off after that but anyhow that was the first hunt i ever went to and there was probably 30 or 40 dogs over there pkc hunt or ukc no it was a ukc, UKC hunt. hunt they were three hour hunts back yeah. then what year was that oh man that would have been 67 that would have been late 70s yeah when did they switch to the two-hour hunts? Mid eighties, early eighties. Uh, early eighties, they started yeah. PKCs. Well, when PCA. Yeah. And then later on, UKC switched to two hours. Did you win your first cast? The first, the first few I went to, I never did hunt. But I just went and walked along, and then the first hunt I ever hunted in, it was at Wyatt, Missouri, a UKC hunt. I hunted a blue tick female, believe it or not, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Look back on it now, I wouldn't even feed her, but <laughs> I wound up winning my cast. I still got the trophy at home. I think I got third or something yeah. that night. But she's one of them that I wouldn't even feed today, but I thought she was pretty good at the time. What? Uh, when did you start getting your own dogs? Oh, I got up 17, 18 year old. Me and my brother Randy started buying some dogs together, competition hunting and uh we had a couple females randy liked to run the open hunts i never did care much for mm-hmm. him a whole lot but he liked the state races and we had a couple females we won the missouri state race two or three years and kept them up there in the standings who were the big names back then around here because there's still quite a few <clears throat> hunters down here i know when i when i'm down in this part of the world i have no trouble finding a place to go hunting or anything like that you know or find oh, a hunter to go man, hunt with. Uh, the first bigger name hunters i started hunting with uh i was 17 i think maybe 16 i went and tried a dog off of dave roberts and ronnie bone mm-hmm. i met them over in illinois and uh got to hunting with them and just started hunting with them a bunch and then i'd uh in the youth hunt was the dog any good no <laughs> no i didn't buy him they tried every way in the world to sell him to me but no i didn't buy him but backing up a little bit i had placed uh second in the youth hunt it was the second year they had it i think it was 84 and part of placing in that uh pkc would buy you any pup you wanted no kidding and i was still hung up on blue dogs at the time and T. John Treadwell's daddy had a dog named Blue Pride that he was studying at that time. Mm-hmm. And I wanted a pup out of him really, really bad. And we called and called, and he would never even return my call. 
but I was at a hunt one night and Clyde Treadwell was there and that was back not long after Clyde had bought Bo- Hardwood Bozo mm-hmm. and somebody said something to Clyde about me trying to get a pup and I never could get one and he told me to come to his house and just pick out anything I wanted out of Bozo and looking back on it that's actually what got me to hunting walker dogs so you you might have been steve a tried and true blue tick man if it hadn't been for just that one if they if if john t would have just returned your phone call i could have (laughs) we actually uh the blue my brother had bought a blue tick male when i was 14 or 15 and he was he was a really really good dog uh, he had some holes in him, but he was a really good dog. Probably the first good dog I hunted with very much. Mm-hmm. And he died. I was going to hunt him when I was 15 in a youth hunt, and he died about two or three weeks before that from heartworms. And I didn't have nothing else to hunt, so I didn't hunt that year. But the next year I did hunt. Yeah. And back then. Back six, then there wasn't as big a gap between the walkers and the blue ticks. Uh, I don't think. I mean, it was there. But I mean, there were some pretty good blue dogs winning some pretty oh, yeah. big hunts. Back oh yeah, then. and back then, uh, in a cast, there was usually only one dog in that cast that would actually stay mm-hmm. treat. I mean, whether it was a walker dog or a blue dog or whatever, it wasn't like nowadays. You didn't have dogs split everywhere. Yeah. It was usually at least three dogs, if not four, on every tree. Mm-hmm. It was just just a lot different than it is now when did you start seeing the change to those more independent dogs uh some people will probably say i'm wrong the first ones i noticed was when i started hunting bozo bred dogs of treadwells i mean they were early starting dogs they were real independent and uh i mean they it didn't bother them to be by themselves what did what was that pup you got off treadwell like uh the first one i got i didn't like uh they treated way too much yeah and then i went back and got another pup that was a rare thing back then even in walkers and stuff they didn't treat too much back no then. and actually the the bozo line of dogs to me is where the got most of the treeing back in the, a lot of the yeah. walker dogs that yeah. would stay treed regardless uh if they tree, that's where you was going to put your leash on them if yeah. it was a fence post. And see, I don't think anybody knew what to do with a dog like that back then. No, a lot of people didn't. And, you know, Bozo was one of the most overlooked stud dogs in the world. Yeah. A lot of people didn't breed to him because he was ugly. He looked like a pit bull. Yeah. And I look back on it. Man, one of the biggest mistakes, uh, he was about 9 or 10 years old, and Clyde let me and a couple of my friends hunt him one winter and he was he taught me what true dogs was uh we hunted over in the hills a bunch and there weren't any coons and when you turn that white rascal loose we didn't have a tracker you'd drive around you'd find Mm -hmm. him somewhere a tree and he'd always have a coon and he was nine or ten then he was nine or ten but uh i never forget I used to go up to Clyde's and hunt a bunch, and there was always Dave Juvers, Russ Beller, Wayne Green. The whole crew would be there a lot of nights hunting, pleasure hunting, and they all had the good dogs. Yeah, They had Stryker, Pac-Man, all the big-name dogs back then. And uh, it was up there one night, and Russell was fixing to take – I don't remember which one of the old dogs that he had. He was taking them to Texas to get them collected. And he told Clyde, he said, you need to let me take Bozo down there and get him collected. I think it was Texas a and M where they yeah. were going. And Clyde just kind of laughed at him. He was old school, an older guy, yeah. and he just laughed at him about it. But I look back on it now, and, man, what would some semen off a of hardwood Bozo be worth today? Oh, it'd be crazy. Just like when I talked with Frank and Rob Giddings and about Sackett Jr., you know, he died with nothing in the tank either yeah and just some of these older dogs you look at what a straw a straw lipper or a straw rat or something like that goes for it'd be crazy with bozo it would be uh, i know what i know what it would be worth if i had it yeah (laughs) (laughs) so what'd you move on to after your after your bozo pups oh me and my brother randy we got the 
trading around trying to get something better of our own and i bought a dog off of me and him bought a dog that we give four thousand dollars for a dog alacoma we bought him off of brian owens his name was mm-hmm. flat rock gas and he was a coon dog i mean i don't know i don't really know what happened somewhere in his life he got over broke for some stuff before we bought him but you didn't want to go out with a 22 and try to beat him tree and coons because he would beat your eyeballs out but in a cast sometimes he would get weirded up and just quit or go to the truck or whatever and then we took him uh a buddy of mine lives over here about 20 miles at east prairie missouri had a little female named hardwood molly that was all night heat and she had thrown some pups out of old coma one of them had placed in the super stakes and placed in the finals of the world hunt and we bred her to gas and got a litter of pups and the one i kept out of the litter got run over when he was six seven months old and i was wanting another one and jeff told me about one that eric henry had running loose at his house so i go find eric look him up and come to find out was a dog later on i wound up with a dog named thrasher mm-hmm. i was wanting and to talk about thrasher we t- i tried to buy him and eric just kind of laughed at me he wouldn't price him to me and i don't know he was six seven eight month old he just kind of laughed at me and like i said i was looking for dogs and i don't know i was getting disgusted and my brother randy calls me one day and he said hey i got that dog bought that you was that you wanted to get and i told him i said i i don't know i really don't want it and he said well i bought him for 750 dollars so i get home that day and i go out to the pen and there's this little pup out there and it's thrasher he's covered in ticks and he'd been running loose he looked rough <laughs> he'd been fending for himself i think anyhow i've messed around there and i didn't even really want the dog and i, I thought well randy's been good to me he's bought me dogs you know i'm gonna pay him for half of this dog bad as i hate to and i fattened him up a few days and started hunting him a little bit and Right, we had a female at that time named Cindy, and she had won quite a bit in open hunts. Pretty good dog. And we took him hunting one night, and we turned loose, and Thrasher strikes a deer, I don't know, two or three hundred yards, and just leaves out of the country running. And Cindy treed four or five coons. And we get the tracker out, and I find him. He's three or four miles from our tree, but he's got a coon. <laughs> And the next night we went, same thing. He leaves out running junk. We find him three or four miles from there. How old was he when he, when he started? He was 10, 11 months yep. old. And anyhow, my brother Randy was like, you like that dog, don't you? I said, yeah. He said, well, I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> we lived right next to one another then. And yep. I told him, I said, well, that's fine. You don't have to see him no more. So I take this dog and I hunt him. Oh, man, I hunt him every night, every night, every night and within a matter of about 30 days he went from would run a deer to the end of the earth to you could turn him loose in a field full of deer and mm-hmm. he'd never make a bark and i'd been hunting him about three months and i called my brother and i said hey let's go to barlow tonight it's over a big bottom over here in kentucky i hunt a bunch and uh he said okay so i go down to his house and he goes to get Cindy out of the pen, and I told him, I said, just put her up. All she'll do is get in his way. <laughs> and he just kind of laughs at me. It's like, yeah, yeah, I've heard this before. So we go over there that night, and I don't know, the dog tree, five or six coon, looked about as good as a pup could look. And I put him in the truck, and we get back to his house, and I told him, I said, well, you don't need to see him for a while. <laughs> and it just went to hunting, and just me and him just a, he's just a nat did you because a lot of folk we still look for them dogs that are gamey and especially as young dogs and they run junk as pups and stuff i love it and you love it and i know a lot of these guys love it when he when he switched over to ignoring deer and tree and coons was it because he's feeding him coons i and, killed every coon that yeah. dog ever treed no. uh i've told people stories about killing coons of him and most of them don't even believe how many mm-hmm. coons I killed to that dog. Uh, 
there was a lot of times that dog would go 35 and 40 trees in a row yeah. and have a coon in every one of them, and I'd kill every one of them. If he treated in a game warden's yard, I'd kill him. <laughs> I mean, there, was, there was people who got mad at me about killing coons with that dog, but that was just... Yeah. He was one of them, the more you killed him, the more he treated. Yeah. Duds was like that as a baby, too. I just... Uh, you had to shoot them all. And, but he he got over it eventually. But the thrasher, as he got older, get to where... I don't know. I always never him. Never tried it. <laughs> <laughs> if I was winning like he was winning with Thrasher, I don't think I'd have changed anything either. <laughs> you know, there was people ask me that, but I don't... Man, unless it lodged, I don't remember a coon yeah. that dog treed pleasure hunting that I didn't shoot out. Well, that's just like Brandon and them guys hunting con now, and they said, you know, you shoot him all those coons. I said, that dog's never treated the same coon twice. <laughs> I said, I can promise you that. I've never, that dog's never treated the same coon twice. That's that's the way I did with him. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It worked with him. Some yeah. dogs it does and some that yeah. don't. But. It does. It depends on the dog. I know Bella, I didn't like to shoot very many of her coons. Uh, Rain, she don't need a bunch. But, you know, some of them dogs need coons, and they thrive on coons. And those are the ones that I prefer. I do, too. I like to kill them. Yeah. I've, I've always been I've Well, always I mean, that, that just, way. to me, that just gives you a chance to reward a dog with out having to pet him up or get him wild on a tree or anything like that i mean you, he has a coon you shoot it if you don't have a coon you don't and you don't have to work on much i've always all the good dogs i've ever really trained or hunted a bunch when i'm really zoned in on getting that dog ready for a hunt i give them two options yeah have a coon or get your ass whooped yep that's the only two options they got when i turn them loose Anything in between, well, it usually don't turn out too good. There for you go. <laughs> that's pretty cut and dried, and that's about as simple as a guy could, as a handler can make it for a dog. I mean, if you think about it, if you get a dog where every time you cut him, he trees a coon, you will win a large percentage of your cast. Mm -hmm. They can do a lot of stuff in between. Yep. But when they tree, you have a coon every time you cut them. Yep. All you got to do is make two cuts, maybe three. I mean, if they make three trees, they're going to beat you. I, uh, I've told people this, and they'll like, they think you're crazy. You take, you give me two fifty plus, and I'll set at the truck, and I will win a large, mm -hmm. large percentage of cast. Yep. I've always said that too. Two coons. Give me two coons and no minus. Yeah. Whatever they get, they got to keep. Yep. You know, a lot of dogs run up a big score and then they give a lot back. You no, know, there aren't very many that can overcome some minus. No. Maybe I can think of maybe one or two. Ruby was a fine example there. She can make a mistake and come back and beat you and maybe a couple of others that I'm not thinking off right hand, but the dog that doesn't make a mistake, even how many how many thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars have been won with 200 plus on a dog that babbles out of the truck and gets treed one time with a coon? Exactly. You know, Marv beat me like that just a month ago up at Shawnee Town. He yeah. had he's a hundred and a hundred on the only tree he made. Trailed around for an hour and forty five minutes, came treed fifteen minutes left and beat us. I mean, I've won a lot of money with a hundred and a quarter plus. Yeah. Yeah. Just tree of cane. What was uh what all did you win with Trasher? It was a bunch. Uh I won both of the super stakes. Yeah. Back then there was just two years. I won the one year old and the two year old and then that was they just had one super stakes back yes. then too they didn't the, have it, it fall in the, in the fall. spring yeah it was in yeah. the fall the week before the world hunt and then i won the futurity with him yeah but that dog uh when i went to the one year old super stakes he'd been in one hunt i carried him to one fifty dollar hunt at paducah and i won my cast and got my hundred one and then i went to the super stakes and i got in the first night and i wound up winning it and then the next year, I put him in maybe one or two hunts. And then I went to the Futurity with him, and I got in the first night, mm -hmm. and I won it with him. And then the F Super Stakes, I got beat the first night, late round, on a question, which should have never happened, but it happened. Hold on a second. Hold on, hold on. I, w I want to hear the. Ver I want to hear what happened. <laughs> oh. You don't have to name any names. I just want to hear what happened. We were hunting over in Barlow, uh -huh. and well, over there where I got it in the uh, youth deal. You yep. know how them vines are and them trees yep. down there? Thrasher trees on a tree, 
it's a small tree. You just get those vines in it, and the vines go into the next tree where the coon is. And the judge pluses it, and a guy in the cast, I won't mention him. <laughs> you can pretty, tell me after we're, we're pretty get, good friends. <laughs> you can tell me after you hit this Anyhow, button. he questions it, and they wind up overturning it. Pain will come out and look at the tree. No, I don't. It was a, it was a big cluster. So they overturned it without coming to look at it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. I stayed. I was mad. I was mad. I, I wasn't even going to hunt the next night. And my brother Randy was like, "Steve, hunt. You'll get in." He said, "They're not going to keep that dog out. Don't let that keep mm-hmm. you from." So I go the next night. And I get him in, and then wound up winning the two-year-old with him. But he was a dog. Uh, if he barked, it was a coon. Yeah. When he treed, you could just go ahead and plus it. Uh, some cast he didn't tree three or four. Some cast he did. But back then, you know, it was always at a is that a roar the two super stakes were. Mm-hmm. And some cast over there, you didn't tree as many coons yeah. if you went to the wrong places. No, I know that's a fact. And I remember one of the casts over there, I remember walking around. These dogs have treed. There was a couple of nailer dogs in the cast, and they've treed, and they've treed, and they've treed. And that one old boy said, it ain't looking too good for you. He said, I told him, I said, all we got to do is get on top of one of these hills and let me hear that dog. And I said, all mm-hmm. them circle points y'all got won't be any good. <laughs> And they're kind of laughing at me. And the hunts wind down, and I finally, I'll never forget, Eddie Clinton was judging. And finally, there wasn't nothing going on. Nothing was struck. Nothing was treed. I asked him, I said, can we walk right up here on top of this hill? Because I know that dog was treed somewhere. Anyhow, we walked to the top of the hill, and you can just barely hear that dog sitting through there treed. And I said, Eddie, do you got me? And he said, yeah. So I strike and tree him. And we walked forever to this dog. You didn't have Garmin back then. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how far it was. Thrasher had a good mouth, didn't he? Had a good yeah. mouth, good carrying mouth. Yeah. We walked forever to that dog, and these guys are whining, they're fussing. We get off in these hollers, and you couldn't hear him. You get up top, and you hear him. They was wanting Eddie to put the two on him and all that. And he told them there about. We finally got to where you could hear him the whole time walking, and he told that one boy. That one boy had been running his mouth about he had me beat and all that and Eddie told him he said well I got a feeling when we get to this tree in here he said this little old dog's gonna have something that's gonna take care of all them circle points <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we got there and he had a coon I didn't even have him leashed up and Eddie's like y'all see that he said there's what we're out here for <laughs> but what do you he had how many pups did Thrasher end up having Oh, he had around 400 pups, yeah. I think. Yeah, and he uh, threw some good pups. He threw some pups. Uh, all the dogs that the Burdens are hunting now yep. go back to some dogs off of him. Uh, they had a dog named Train, and then they had another dog. Uh, man, it ain't coming to me the dog's name now. But they, they were actually Lurdermate Brothers. Uh, the second dog they had won the Futurity and won some more. We were at me and Randy had right, we made that cross again, and we were at the British showcase. And Zach was a little bitty kid. He was probably three or four year old, and they was come over there, and Zach wanted one of them pups. And Randy told him, "Said just get in there and pick out which one you want." And he got it. And anyhow, it wound up. It went on. The dog's name was Shaq, I think, is what mm-hmm. it was. It won the Futurity and did quite a bit of winning. How many dogs was at the Futurity back then? Man, there was a bunch. Yeah. I hated to see that hunt go. They screwed it up. Yeah. Trying these stupid zones like they're doing with the world hunt now. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say that for That's you. That's fine. I was going to talk to you about that later anyway. We're going to get into that, Steve. I want to I want to hear your opinion on that. One thing about it, I'm always open to everybody's opinion. <laughs> so uh, let's move on. I want to talk about Trip, too, and talk about so many other dogs that you've handled and owned and all that stuff. But uh, I always liked, I liked Trip. I liked him when I hunted with him. I liked a lot of his pups. Uh, you done a lot with him. Uh, when did you get your hands on him? Man, he was like seven and a half years old mm-hmm. when I 
I called Heath. Eric Henry had got him. Yeah. And uh, I told Heath, I said, if we can get that, if we can get Eric to price him, I want to buy that dog. We'd been looking for a dog, and anyhow, Heath told me he said, well, if he prices him anything reasonable, just tell him we'll take him. And anyhow, I wound wound up buying him that winter. And then I hunted him that winter, and I won about everything I carried the dog mm-hmm. to. And then I carried him to the CHKC World Hunt and got him in the top 16. And then a couple of weeks later, I carried him to the Nationals, and we wound up winning it. Because it ain't like, and Trip's a good example of this, but you look at, uh, I've drawn you with Tank, who's an older dog, Sunday's best, who's an older dog. I, I've hunted with you've done a lot of winning with trip and some older dogs and stuff that have been and zeb three we talked about earlier and these are older once my dogs are four i can't get nothing out of them on (laughs) on the males (laughs) so i've always wanted to know what is your secret because these are all good coon dogs that at some point zeb three trip sunday bass tank uh, all them dogs had done some winning and they were good coon dogs and then they go on a losing streak or they go through a spell or something and then the next thing i know i look on the cover of pro hound there's yant holding one of them so w- w- what did you do with those dogs oh you just dogs like that you see certain things in them and a lot of times they carry them to these hunts and they carry them all the time and people don't take care of them and the dogs get sick and then they don't go doing right and people get on them for this Mm -hmm. or that and they get down on them and you know you take a really good dog and all of a sudden he just falls off the face of the world there's something going on there Mm -hmm. oh i know trust me and (laughs) most of the time it's health issues yeah or it's somebody's pushed the dog too hard and i don't know if they get to where it ain't fun for the dog you know that dog a lot of dogs will shut down on you when they Mm -hmm. get older and you got to make it fun for the dog and then you got to figure out little like zeb three his deal was killing coons when he treed if you didn't shoot a coon out to him you'd hear him chomping his teeth he wanted to chew on the coon and like trip i mean Man, I tried to get my hands on him when he was two years old. Yeah. Justin never would. He always wound up selling him, but it always wound up where I couldn't get my hands on him. Yeah. Because I, I was hunting a dog named Eli, and I'd draw him, and he'd beat my brains in. Eli was a couple years older than him, but I'd draw him, and he mm-hmm. would just wear me out. I thought, man, if I could just get my hands on that dog. And finally got my hands on him, and things worked out pretty good. Tell me about, you've told me before, was it a brother to Thrasher that you said was really good? Or a pup out of him or something? We had a pup out of him. Me and my brother Randy did. Because uh, you told me that was one of the better coon dogs you've ever turned loose. And he would yeah, struggle in a cast. Yeah, he would just, I don't know. He was, far as tree and coons was... He was he was something special. Yeah. But you got him in a cast, and he just I don't know. He never could, never could put it together. And see, there's a lot of dogs, and what people don't understand that go to hunts like me and you go to, or push a dog hard for say a year in a race or something like that. You know, they don't understand that there's an extra something a dog's got to have to do well at that. Being just a good coon dog isn't enough. You got to be a good coon dog, and you got to have something a little extra. They got to have. As my good friend Junior Jackson always said, a dog's got to have that eye of the tiger. Yeah. And when they lose that, they're not going to win much. I don't care how good they are. they got to have that little extra. And that was part of the reason we wound up selling Thrasher. Yeah. I hunted that dog. Man, I don't know. I know there in one year I hunted that dog 340-some nights. And then after... I won a two-year-old super stakes with him that fall or after that that winter i kind of let him rest a little bit and we bred a couple females to him his daddy everybody wanted to breed to him well all of a sudden we found out he's sterile mm-hmm. 
So now everybody's bugging me to breed the thrasher, and I caved in and didn't hunt the dog as hard that winter and bred a few females to him. And then when I went back to hunting him, he just didn't have that little extra. No. He treed coons, and people would go with me, and they'd say, why are you mad at that dog? And I said, because he's just not giving me that little extra he they didn't did. see him when he was a two-year-old no they didn't hunt with him because yeah. i there's very few people that ever hunted with that dog that wasn't in a cast i yeah. just didn't didn't ever hunt him with a lot of people when uh do you think it was the females or do you think it was the time off i think a combination of both yeah. uh he never got mean he never followed females so i don't know if it was yeah. the females or not but he just didn't have that little extra yeah. My my theories have changed on this because like when Con came up and he was such a dynamic one year old, I, I knew the dog was special. He's gonna be great. I was envisioned eight years of just winning everything I put him in and stuff. I thought I'm gonna take it slow. I'm gonna take it easy. Still, even with limited casts and all that stuff, he still was a train wreck. About the same time his dad was a train wreck and even more casts. Or you know, I just I don't know if it's a I used to think that you could put a dog up and not push them too hard, but I think eventually they just get to an age if they're if it's genetically in them that there there ain't nothing you can do. I think so. Uh, I think some of that's maybe bred in them, mm-hmm. and then some of it. I don't know. I've started out with these young dogs that I got anymore. If I think they're going to make anything with me, if I go on a trip somewhere, even if I'm not going to hunt them in a hunt, I'll carry them with yeah. me. And I think that's one of the mistakes we make a lot of times. We always hunt them at the house. We got the same routine. They got the same bowl they eat yeah. out of, the same pen. And then when you carry them off to a hunt, they look around. They're at a different place. They got to eat somewhere different. And they're just not the same dog. I know, because, I mean, you say you carry yours around. I'm starting to do that, too. I'm lucky now, because I can... You know, right now, I, I told you I was going to hunt tonight, but I got mad at my female last time I hunted her, <laughs> and I sold my pup, so I didn't know how to, it's 95 degrees or something like that here today in humid. I said, you know what, I'm not going to go hunting tonight with Steve. <laughs> but I'm in a place now where I can just throw dogs in the box, and I can go down, and if I'm in Arkansas, I hunt with Aaron Crow, or if I'm up here, I can hunt with you, or if I'm somewhere, I can hunt, and I can take these young dogs and just put them in the truck and get them used to being in the truck. And... The only problem I have is I'm getting ready to have a litter of pups out of Hazel and Shock. And my goal is when the, that pup's four or five months old, the one I keep it, I'm going to put in the truck and I'm going to pack it with me everywhere. But then I may go through all that trouble of packing this dog and getting it ready for the road. And it may not be no good. <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> so I've got one there at the house now. He's Ella. That jock dog that I'm hunting, and he's seven and a half month old, but. I don't know. We'll see. This time next year, I don't know. Let's talk about Jock, too, because the first time I got to hunt with Jock, I was judging. I was a backup judge or something up there at our Pro Classic, and Jock was a young dog. That was, what is he? He's just four now? Yeah. Yeah, he was just, just a two year five. He was just a two-year-old then. Yeah. Just turned two, I think. And you had got him in on the Saturday night cast. And then late round, wasn't it late round? Yeah. You got him in that round. night and he was hunting late round. And uh, I really liked him. He didn't win that cast, but he was way off by himself and had a good mouth and good tree dog and everything. And I, I remember I drove you right to the tree and I sat up there with you. So I was, <laughs> glad, was glad I could go with Steve and not have to walk with the other three dogs for four miles. But what about when you had Jock? Because you got him as a baby, right? He was about eight months old, I think, when yeah. we bought him off Kevin Primer. Yeah, I say he was a young dog. What did you see in Jock when he was young that made you think he was going to be able to stick around? Ah, he was just a dog that, man, he was wild, big hunting dog. And I don't know, I've always been a sucker for a hunting dog. Yeah. As long as when they tree, they stay and have a king. Uh, most of these pups anymore don't have enough go to them. Yeah, for I me. agree. Some people enjoy it. Uh, I've never been able to win with a dog that wasn't wild. Mm-hmm. Not consistent. Well, Jock's still pretty wild. I drew you up there to <laughs> Sean's. I drew you up there to Sean's, and I was hunting scent. We could, we all got in, hunted it off late. It scent looked like a just a absolute pile. I think she covered a coon out of the truck, could treat a couple of slicks. Just looked just looked terrible. She looked good early, looked bad late. 
And I told Jed, I said, I got third. I said, he goes, how'd you get third? I said, we never heard Jock all night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, yeah. he blew out the wrong direction, and he was in there treed with a coon, you know, but we just couldn't ever hear him. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you lose with dogs like that. Yeah. But I'll take my chances with a dog that, that hunts yep. more than one that don't hunt as good. Especially in a late round. Yeah, and really, though, if you get down to it, I mean, there's not that many casts that somewhere in there you won't have a little downtime. A mm-hmm. dog don't need to pull them ears back and go somewhere. Yep. Now, there's times they go too far. Most cast people gripe at me about Jock going too far. But when he's acting right and we're in coons, I mean, he treats. His only fault that night was he went the wrong direction. He was he ran into a bunch of open stuff. Yeah, and uh I've always said I'd rather a dog go too far than not far enough. Yeah. Well, you missed out after you went and got jock because I spent the last 30 minutes of that cast just in telling them other guys, Rain or Sent needs to get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. How many times have I been in a late round, especially with uh, Duds was real bad about that in a late round. He'd fly through the world early, and he'd be everywhere early, and he'd look good, and then in the late round he'd just – fall off a little bit and he'd bang around in there with them other dogs or something like that and you just can't have it i've always that's one reason i've always liked a hunting dog most of my dogs that i've trained and i've hunted a bunch if you let me win early them late rounds i'm hell to beat yep yep and you're you you don't split well, I'm getting old now. <laughs> get I, do some cast. <laughs> I seen a couple casts there where Yant was splitting here last summer, you know. I thought, well, yeah. Yant, Yant's hobbled up or something. Yeah, you get old. Sometimes you do stuff you don't really want to do. Your, your heart tells you to do one thing, but you get older, sometimes that brain kicks in. Let's talk about the differences in – because you're the, you're the national director for Missouri, your state director for Missouri – uh, you've been involved in PKC for when? Do, when? What's your PKC number? Uh, the one I have now is eighty three oh nine. My yeah. first number was three hundred and something. Yeah. So I've been a PKC member since two thousand one, and I'm in the seven thousands. Yeah. So you've been doing this a long time. Well, how? What are you seeing that you don't like about the hunts today versus back then, and what you do like about the hunts today versus back then? Uh, number one, I've always been a sucker for hunting for big money. Mm-hmm. And I do like the big purses they have now. I think some of the higher entry fees does cut some people out. But if you can afford it, man, there's there's lots of money out there for a yeah. man to shoot for right now. Uh, I think for the most part, PKC needs to quit changing stuff and stay with what got them to where they are. I mean, there is certain things they could change and, you know, may help, may not. But they change these rules back and forth like the leash lock. Mm -hmm. I know you and Jed love to know leash lock. Here's my thing on that. I mean, last year you probably won more money than you've ever won. Yeah. With rain. Yeah. And guess, there was a leash lock in what? place. There was yep. a leash lock. Yes, there was. <laughs> the leash lock, people will argue with me on this. I'm going to say 95% of the cast, the leash lock has no effect on it. I do agree with that. A good dog's going to win. You get a good dog and a good handler, you can change the rules all you want. They're still going to win. And look right now. We changed the rules. We changed it to no leash lock. The same people won. Mm-hmm. We've changed it back. Other than me, I ain't won shit since they <laughs> changed it. <laughs> Maybe I am for them changing it back. <laughs> but, I mean, we changed it back, and they still say, you know, the same people's yeah. winning, so these guys are cheating, you know. And But I do think, you know, they got a proposal going on now about adding $5 mm-hmm. to some open hunts and maybe getting our state escrow and a youth fund and some of it going to the world hunt some people's not going to like it but i think in the long run if people will participate more 
I mean, everybody gripes about their clubs yep. going down, but how many of us go to our clubs? Exactly. That's that's the hunter's fault. It's my you know, fault. It's our fault. Yeah, it's my fault. You know, everybody I mean, sits I, and yeah. gets on a computer and gripes and gripes and gripes. And I've did it some myself. Yeah. But I have too. It's our fault. Yeah. I mean I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna let you in on a little news as, as I text Shane with the proposal today. <laughs> you may actually like this one. I told him because look they they brought the zones back and we're going to talk about this because i've already talked about how you don't agree with the zones and that and i understand your point i do but i also text shane today i said look i know you guys have been overwhelmed with proposals here lately and stuff but i got one more for you let's not change any rules until the first of the year by majority vote the only way a rule can change other than after october 1st or right at october 1st is if it's a unanimous decision. If every single state director votes for it, then we can change it. Mm, yeah, I, and here's the thing. One of the things that aggravates me, I've been a director now and messed around with it for several years. We used to always have directors meetings. Mm-hmm. Well, now they've got away from that. They want to do this over the phone bull crap. People... People are different on the phone or behind yeah. a computer than they are if you get them in a room. It's just like recording this podcast. I only want to do them in person. I hate doing them over the phone. And I remember, man, for years, back then it was every two years, if you had a proposal, you could have all of them you wanted. But it didn't get heard for two years. Yeah. Because when they set that, unless there was a bad, bad mistake in the blue book, and they changed it when they had that meeting when they got done with it whatever was set in stone then there wasn't no changing it for two years yeah and then that now we went to four years which is too long in my opinion yeah. i think it ought to go back to two but now they want to change them every month no and i i agree we've been changing too much too fast and it's just like the leash lock rule it was changed for what two or three months and then they switched it back yeah you know and i I didn't think that was enough time and and i did understand your guys's point the the judges do walk their guts out and the handlers walk their guts out and i understand that it's not for everybody but you know i think maybe if we'd have gave that a little longer it stuck it didn't stick that's fine we're still going to be at the world hunt you know we're still going to be hunting pkc whether there's a leash lock or not but i do think that everything's so reactionary anymore you know everybody just wants to yep let's do it and but we don't ever sit down and consider it especially in the social media age i think if we had time to sit down and consider things and a rule is in place for a year unless it's unanimously voted on and then we change it we can change it by majority vote you know the first of october yeah. you know when the new season starts and that, that would be that would be a good idea like you said i mean i don't i don't know i just there's certain programs that need some tweaking here yeah. and there but man, our rules have worked for a long time. Mm-hmm. Leave them alone. Yeah, and there's. I mean, uh, I mean, we there's other kennel clubs. If you want to change rules, you know. Exactly. You can, I mean, but here's my deal. There, everybody thinks this no leash lock is going to change. You know, I've got old Fred out here that'll mm-hmm. tree fifteen coons while yours is running. <laughs> well, guess what? Look at pro sport. Mm-hmm. How many old Freds have you seen win in pro sport? I'll tell you what, I went to Shawnee Town and I hunted the truck hunt at Mercer and I love the hunts and I do love hunting pro sport, but we walked our guts out and them dogs were all a mile deep and spread apart. <laughs> just, like yeah. they, just like they are everywhere else, it's the same dogs. But the same dogs yeah, win. They you are. know what I'm saying? Yep, and everybody are. thinks, oh no, I can win if they do this. No, you can't. Yeah. No, I mean, you still got to have a really good dog it's to win. Uh, and people... Some people will disagree with this. Yeah. The same people win because of two reasons. They put in the work, and they have the dog, and they have somebody to back them. You know, you can you can say what you want to. These people, you can change all the rules you want, and it's still going to have the same winners pretty yeah. much. I mean, there's going to be some slip in here and there. But the guys that win consistently are still going to win, no matter what the rules are. And the pro classics are, and me and Jed talked about this too, 
it's basically the same 40 or 50 handlers oh, all yeah. the time. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it, and it's the same uh, guys buying the entries all the time. And to be honest with you, those are the humps I love. Yeah, they are me too. And you, that's one of the reasons. Yeah. Chances, man, if you go to if you go to three or four of them, you might have one bad cast out of three or four yeah. of them. And that's looking at hunting eight or nine casts. You might have one bad cast. And it'll be because a judge let something go and yeah. then they let it built up or whatever. I've never had a bad cast with a good judge. No. Never. Not once. Uh, and you just, you know, you go there, it's a little bit different group of handlers. And we all want to beat one another's brains in. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I draw you, yeah, I want to beat your brains in. Yep. But when it's over, we're still going to be buddies. We were last time. I mean, you know. <laughs> I, uh, me- I remember last time we drew out, I beat you, and then we I had to stay at your cabin. <laughs> beat you in the last two minutes, and I was I was staying at your cabin that night. <laughs> yeah, I should have poked a hole in your tires that <laughs> night. <laughs> but I like hunting them hunts because we go out there, everybody's focused. Yeah. Everybody's usually got a little bit better dog, and you got a little bit better handlers, and you got some better judges, and you just have a better time. Yeah, and it's hard to go from that back to hunting and getting your, say, your five wins for the Tournament of Champions or back to a $30 hunt. Oh, man. It's hard. Uh, And I'm not being... And I don't, I don't, I don't want to discourage any of that or talk down on any of that, because that's great. I want everybody to have the opportunity to coon hunt. But it's hard to go from, it's just like getting them, and this is going to make some people mad, I know, but it's just like going from an ML, an MLB team down to, to single A. You know, they don't like it. Exactly, and then, I mean, man, I hate to say it, people will think you're bragging or something, because I don't, I don't ever want to sound like I'm bragging about anything, but if I go to a $30 hunt, Nine out of ten of them there, they don't care if they win the hunt. They want to beat me yeah. if they draw me. They don't care yeah. how they beat me. They just want to say, hey, I beat Steve Yent hunting so-and-so dog. Yeah, I try to be the podcast guy that knocks on them every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> it's even worse. And they're all, and they don't, don't get me wrong, they're all good folks, great people. And I just wish they would treat me or any of these other larger handlers the way they treat the guy down the road that's got an old red bone tied behind the barn. You know, it's funny. I'll say this. It's been, I don't know, six or seven years ago, I was hunting a dog named Weapon, Wipeout Weapon. Yeah, I remember Weapon. And we were trying to make him, going to make him a grand night or something or another. Anyhow, I carry him over here to a UKC hunt. And I drew three boys that I didn't know. They were young boys. They didn't know me. I didn't know them. Mm -hmm. And he's beat their brains in i mean he's treed three or four canes while their dogs have just ran all over the place and ain't did <laughs> nothing and we call time out and move and i'm hoping they'll all withdraw because i've got i don't know i'm ahead by five or six hundred points you yeah. know and there's 20 some minutes ago and i'm thinking these kids will quit you know no nah, we get out <laughs> over there <laughs> and well, well if y'all ain't gonna quit we're, we're gonna go to a different spot so I go to this big long fence though, and it's got rice fields all around it. And I know weapons are not going to get out there and run in those mm-hmm. rice fields. He's going to blow down this fence row and tree a coon setting somewhere. So I turn him loose. Man, he's treed in three or four minutes, just as far as you can hear him. I strike him, and uh, I let the hunt run out. I don't ever tree him. And this one kid that I've beat by six or seven hundred points you know i don't know 500 or something anyhow the hunt's over and he said uh can i ask you something i said yeah he said uh why didn't you treat that dog i said well i didn't need to treat him to beat (laughs) y'all and he said well he said didn't you say that's gonna make him a night champion and i said yeah i said i think it makes him a night champion he said well he said, you're going to have to go back and hone up on your handling skills if you're going to do any good <laughs> in the night champion cast with him. <laughs> and I laughed all the way to the club. God bless him. <laughs> we, yeah. were, we were hunting at Graham one night. Ralston talked me into going to a little UKC club over at Graham, Missouri. I love that club. Nicest folks, and I always have good hunts over there. I've been over there four or five times. 
but I was it was ended up being a three dog cast and I drew Ralston. <laughs> he was hunting maize and I was hunting duds and this young kid was in his first hunt hunting a black and tan dog or second hunt or something like that. And they spot hunt me down these fence rows and they just will tree a coon and look well duds is gonna annihilate you when you do that. I don't care what you're packing. If you spot hunt that dog and you're not recutting him, he's just gonna destroy you. And so I'm at eight seventy five or nine seventy five or something at the end of this hunt and duds is treed and uh i don't dream i'm just waiting for the hunt to go up and we'd walk closer to him we're standing right above him and this black of tan comes in there six seven minutes after duds trees this litter of coons and trees on there this kid was a good kid too he looks he goes you you care if i tree my dog there's five or six minutes left i said no bud i don't care he goes well i don't want to steal your tree from you i said you're not stealing my tree i said i think 975 will probably get us <laughs> get, get me where i want to be you know and so he trees his dog. I tree Dud second. We go in there and we score the coon. We walk back out to the truck. And this guy goes to the clubhouse. And they said, how'd it go? He said, oh, man, that Walker dog beat me. He looked really good. That's a nice dog. He goes, but I got him on that last tree. That black dog, he didn't know I could hear him, you know. And he goes, that black dog slid in there. And I mean, just bang right in front of that Walker. He said. Yeah, it's a... Uh... It's a different world, but it's an okay world. It's just hard to go back to that after you see the level of dogs and handlers that you that compete at the higher end events. I used to hunt more UKC. I don't know the the older I've got, I don't know. I don't I don't have the tolerance for it. I guess yeah. you know. I, I love to hunt, and I don't care who I hunt against or whatever you know. But it's just they got some good things going on the tournament of champions fantastic hunt and i need to get something out there and get five wins on it and compete in it i just haven't had the time i can only pick and choose so many hunts i would love to hunt that hunt i wish they would change the place where the finals is yeah i cannot i don't think green castle does think, not agree yeah, with me i don't think that would be my favorite place either but i think the venue where they have it and everything is just I great like the money and yeah. uh, you know everybody's everybody just went up there and said it's a really good yeah, i've not talked to anybody that made it into the top 100 or whatever goes out there that just didn't really love it it's guess, getting to that point that i have trouble with i guess i need to quit being so hard-headed and get me a young kid to <laughs> Hunt my dog if well, I make it to Green I'm telling Castle you, when, Jay, when Jace is old enough to handle by himself all the time, I, we'll get a dog qualified there. Yeah, I, I got a young boy hunting with me some now. I may need to get one qualified and get it to there and let him go. Let's talk about, while we, while we brought up them young kids, let's talk about youth nationals. And I just want to thank you for all the hard work you did out there, Steve. Because that was probably... That, like I told Jed on the podcast we did on that, on Fueled by Joy, that was a well-oiled machine. And you get a lot of credit for that, for the judges and the spots and the venue and all that stuff you did out there. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, we put – me and Jed talked about that hunt for a couple of years. And we were at the Missouri State Youth Hunt, Youth Championship, a couple of years ago. It was just me and him and Chris Freiberg. Mm-hmm. And that was when Chris hadn't took over the youth yet, but was talking about it. And me and Jed told him, said, man, we need to do a youth national championship in the summer when kids are out of school. Yep. And he's like, ah, you know. Everybody had always told me and Jed it wouldn't work. Uh, not to mention any names, but we always got <laughs> shot down. Every time we said it to anybody, there's Rod- always... Roger Dale is who you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, he said, you can't get the people to do it. You can't get the money. You can't do this. You can't do that. And I got mad over there one time, and I told him, I said, y'all can't, but we can. And I don't know, somehow or another, after Chris got took it over, they was like, we can do this, but you and Jed's going to have to buckle up and do what y'all said, you know, make it happen, and we did. Yeah, you guys did a freaking awesome job. Uh, it was an awesome job. I told them if they would let me pick my place to have it at, that uh, hey, I had pull I'm, it off. When they said it was in Paducah in June, I had my doubts. I thought I don't know if anybody's going to go. It's going to be hot. It's going to be this and that. But and yeah, it was hot. And but it's going to be hot in June, pretty much no matter where you go. Yeah. But when it the just, kids are out in the summer, you you want to give a chance. But the hunting and the guiding and the cast and the judges, it was all fantastic that area over there i've got a lot of good friends some of them are older and don't hunt much now and some of them are 
some of them guiding over there, me and their dads. Mm -hmm. Like the Stewart boy that guided, Derek Stewart. I mean, I carried that boy on my back when he was a kid coon hunting, you know. And now he was over there judging and guiding. And it, it, I knew we could pull it off if we could just ever get it there. And hopefully the next year and the years to come, we can make it bigger and better. I think it will be. I really do. I, I think, think it's going to be uh, even better next year. Man, other than me rolling my truck, I don't know what could have changed if we could have made <laughs> yeah. that hunt any better. Well, the bad thing is you roll your truck and then you're worried about the meal. I said, Steve, don't worry. I said, we'll take care of the food. We'll yeah. figure something out. But anyhow, it, it all, man, I think it turned out great. Uh, I do too. I think next year we'll have more kids. Yeah, that's going to be maybe not next year, but I bet the year after you're going to average 100 entries a night. I think so. Yeah. Uh, I thought we did really well. Uh, I'd say next year we'll probably increase 15 to 20 kids. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. I figure we'll get 75, um, 80 entries a night next year, and I, I think, think we'll be in the hundreds after, the year you're after right. that. I think we'll get to 100. And now that we know it's going to work and we know it's it's going to go well, uh, I think it's just going to be better because we're going to push it harder. We're going to advertise it more. We're going to do – I know Shane and Roger Dale are on board now, and they're going to help. Shane did a fantastic job down there setting there with Chris and all that stuff. PKC came out. Karina came out. Joy came out. It was good. It really it just, was. You know, it just takes everybody working together. Mm-hmm. And the thing about that area over there, I'm not actually even a member of Paducah Coon Club. I mean, I, that's where I used to guide every yeah. year in the Super Stakes and the World Hunt, and I know all them guys over there. But when I mentioned it to them, some of them were a little bit hesitant and i told them i said here's the deal i'll take all the blame if it doesn't work yeah all i need is some help and man they all chipped in and i couldn't i couldn't every night we had more judges or more guides i mean i used some people on a couple casts just trying to head some stuff off But, man, every night we had more judges, more guides than we needed. And that never happens. And every, Nobody realizes how rare that is. <laughs> and the, the thing about it, I mean, you know how hot it was, but there was a lot of cast that, in our cast, were treating three and four yeah. and five coons. Yeah, we treat, we treat coons on every cast. If it had been 10 degrees colder, there would have been four or five coons to treat on every cast. Coons weren't moving very good, no. you know. Nope. But them kids were packing good dogs, and a lot of them were pretty good handlers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, they surprised me how good they could handle their dogs. Some of them made some bonehead mistakes and some casts I was judging, you know, but most of them were pretty good. Yeah, it's... Them kids have come a long way since me and you came up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, when I grew up, you went to a hunt, you do Ronnie Bone, Dave yeah. Roberts, Dave Jeevers, yeah. you know. You didn't get no slack cut with them guys. It's good for them kids. That's why I like to take Jace and, and put him into Bear Creek with some grown-ups or something every now and then, you know, and just let them beat the brakes off of him because you got to know how to lose, too. I remember my brother Randy told me, he said, you're going to lose some. And he said, that's fine. But he said, the first time somebody comes back and saying, hey, that little brother of yours is causing trouble or mm-hmm. whatever, he said, I won't ever take you to one no more. He said, when you get bigger, you do whatever, but right now. Well, that example that you showed and that I try to show and some of these, it's really rubbing off on these kids, and I've noticed it in the last five years. Because five years ago, when Jace first started hunting, and I'd be part of some of them youth casts, I mean, some of them kids need their ass whooped. And it's getting better every year. It is. It the parents, is. the parents are staying back. The kids are doing better. They're respectful, much more so than they were just five years ago. The more, and some parents don't like this, but the more we can put it to where it's the kids, yep. and less about the parents, the more the better off we'll be. And we're getting there. Yeah. I mean, there's still some parents that try to. And you get some little Jeds running around every now and then too. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, when's the first time you drew Finley? Oh, man. I drew him one time in Texas. How bad was he? Oh, he's a mouthy little shit, you know? I thought, wow, he's got a lot to learn. But He's coming around. He's finally getting better. Yeah, he'll be all right another 20 years. (laughs) 
he'll get old like me and mellow out. Yeah, he's getting better every year, but it's a long process. You know, he's I like mean, a wipeout dog. He don't mature till later in life. <laughs> I remember I was, I was sixteen or seventeen years old, and I hunted at the, I think it was still PCA World Hunt. Yeah, it was at Paducah, and I'll never forget it. James Love, my little buddy, was judging. And the hunt's winding down, and I get to adding up in this score. We're moving. I'm thinking, man, if I can get struck, I had to get struck for 75. Anyhow, I had to have 175 on it if we treat mm-hmm. a coon, and I could win this cast. So I was hunting a little old female that kind of mixed and matched, and I knew she would be with them dogs. She didn't have much mouth. So we get cut loose in there, and I get struck for whatever I need struck for. And these dogs are working this track around in there. And we get to walking, and dogs roll up tree, and I just up tree for 100. And Love kind of looks at me. <laughs> and these dogs, there were some big mouth dogs mm-hmm. in the cast, you know, everything's treed. Man, he's wanting to minus me. Back then, you didn't get minus, you get scratched, yeah. you know. Anyhow. It goes on in there and it winds up. We don't have a coon. I get beat. We got a long walk back to the truck. Love gets back there by me and he puts his arm around me and he starts talking to me. And he said, little buddy, he said, can I tell you something? I said, what's that? He said, "Uh, everybody says you're a pretty good hunter. He said, they tell me you know dogs pretty good and you hunt hard. He said, you're going to have to make up your mind if you're going to be a good hunter or you're going to be a crook. <laughs> and he said, right now you're leaning toward being a crook. <laughs> and I asked him, I said, Judge, what are you talking about? And he just starts laughing. He wanted to bust me so bad yeah. for pitching that dog in there, but he couldn't get me. Yeah. And he said, don't think that you got that over on me. He said, I'll get you next time. Yeah. And judges remember that stuff, especially when it's a young kid. I remember, and I don't remember what year it was, I got I got scratched for striking the wrong dog, and it was my dog. And back then, when you, I mean, if you struck the wrong dog, you didn't get a warning, yeah. you didn't get minus. They'd tell you, when you get a chance to, get that dog and get out of here. And I was so mad at that judge. So mad at that judge. But... I look back on it now, it needs to happen more often. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I agree. These guys. He's they, just getting you back for that one time you pitched your dog. <laughs> <laughs> we've all did it. Yeah, we've all done it. You know, sometimes yep. you get by with it, sometimes yep. you don't. But And my problem, I don't have a problem with anybody trying something. If you try it, but when you get caught. Own up. Own up to it. Yep. Take what you got coming and go on down the road. I was down to Lone Star one night. I'd treat a coon, another dog would treat two, and I'd treat a coon for 200, and he was at 250. And uh, I knew I had to get, this dog was a good strike dog, and maybe I could, if he got in for 50, I'd get in for 100, treat a coon, I could win this cash. You know, there's 10, 10, 12 minutes left, and I've done made up my mind, I'm striking the first dog that barks. I was hunting duds. And we cut loose, and a lot of the dogs barked loose anyway, and duds never did. He was a good strike dog, but he never did babble. And they all cut loose and of course duds got a pretty good mouth and two dogs open up i mean right in front of us and all three of us strike duds is the only dog ain't barked <laughs> <laughs> i strike for 100 another guy strikes 35 and the guy that's winning the cast strikes for 50 and as soon as he lets it out he jumps about 10 feet in the air he goes can't three men strike two dogs <laughs> And he looked at the judge, and uh, the judge looked at me. He goes, was that you? He goes, I believe you were the one who missed call. And I said, I was. I said, my dog didn't open. I said, I tried to pitch him in there, and he didn't bark when he should have barked. So go ahead, and I'll eat my minus, and we'll move on. Yeah, we've all did it. Uh, I guess sometimes we just need to get a better dog. Yeah, that's true. I definitely I've needed had one. i dogs <laughs> that I won with. Yeah. You know, all you need to do is strike and trim. Let, you touched on Weapon earlier, and Weapon was the first dog when I first started hunting with you some. You brought him up one year. Uh, you guys were getting ready for the Russ Meyer, and yeah. I was getting duds ready for, uh, well, when UKC had them big super slams that were like $300, $400 entries or whatever. And we hunted a couple nights up there, and I really liked Weapon. Weapon is, 
man, that dog's a coon dog. Yeah, he was just so business like. He was, you know, he was a wipeout bred dog. But nine times out of ten, that dog barks his treat. Mm-hmm. When, especially at certain times of the year, he don't open much on the ground, and he was just always dead accurate. But he was the most unlucky dog. He, he won a lot. Them. You won a lot with I him for not being with very him. lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I won quite a bit with him, but man, if you knew the things that happened to me with that dog, it was unreal. How much money that dog should have won? Yeah. For what I won with him, he probably should have won twice as much without just stupid, crazy luck. Yeah. Coons jumping out. He treated a lot of coons in bushes. And most of the time, them coons won't jump out to right when you get yep. there. Yep. And he's one of them, if he didn't see it when it hit the ground, I mean, he, he you, you couldn't go catch it and sling it up a tree or yeah. whatever. He got me beat down in Louisiana one night. I'm going to him. And I see this coon, and I'm thinking, man, I've got to get him handled before it bails. He's on a little OB tree on a levee. And I'm wading water, struggling, get nearly to him, and the coon bails out. It jumps out on one side of the levee, and he goes to the other side, and he don't see the coon. He just goes right back to the tree. And mm-hmm. I sit there and watch this coon swim off a $4,000 coon. <laughs> <laughs> I look around, and I think, what am I going to do? He's treed up a tree as big as my arm, you yeah. know? And I just put him on a leash and let him out of there, and here comes Jesse Lively. He's like, what's going on, Steve? And I said, well, just minus me both ways. He said, what do you mean? I said, you, you wouldn't even believe it if I told you. <laughs> you know, one night at Russ Myers' hunt, I've got to hunt one. Coyotes run him off a tree. Just stuff like that. Yeah, some you know, dogs are just born unlucky. He was, he was born. I and I've, man, I've, I've been fortunate to hunt a lot of good dogs. He was one of them. I mean, I. What's the, What's the best one you ever turned loose? I'm not talking. <sighs> let's go with best pure coon dog and easiest dog to win with. Because they're different. Oh yeah, probably. Man, the best pure coon dog was probably Thrasher's Daddy Gas. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't win a lot with him in a hunt because strange dogs, strange people, just something would go wrong mm-hmm. and they'd get his little brain crossed up. But he was probably the best coon dog that I've hunted a whole lot. Uh, as far as winning easy, it would be Zeb 3 or Eileen's Wild Time that Al Nunnaman and them yeah. owned. Wild Time was a man, she was a machine. She's another one that, good Lord, I'd give this truck I got out here, and it ain't much for one just (laughs) close to as good as her. She would hundred and hundred you to death. Really? Oh, my God. I helped Al one year. We decided we was going to win the Kentucky State race. I told him, I said, if you'll give me her and a credit card or a checkbook, we'll win this race. He said, well, get after him, big boy. So I get to run in her, and... There was that was back when most casts were two hours. There wasn't yeah. this hour cast. And the Kentucky State race was hard oh, yeah. to it win. Was, it was hard. It was hard to win. It was hard to get in the top twenty. Yeah, and we were way we were way behind when yeah. I made the big bold comment that I <laughs> went with her, you know. <laughs> and uh Thrasher was just a puppy. I mean, he was like one year old yeah. and I wasn't putting him in no hunt, so I get her out had little kids and stuff wasn't getting hunted as much i go to running her man i went everywhere with her and there was i'm gonna say if i went to 10 hunts probably seven or eight out of 10 these guys would quit you wouldn't hunt 30 or 40 minutes maybe an hour and they'd it's like hey don't turn her loose no more and you know i mean that would be nice to have. And you had, you'd had, you always have enough to get to Final Four hunting that yeah. long. Yeah. Now, I remember one night, the only night it really ever backfired on me, and I'll never forget this, I was hunting, the Labor Day Classic was at Smithland, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And I'm guiding. We go down there to Ballard on the refuge where I carried you over there yep. with them kids, and there was corn in there. And we'd hunted about 400, about 40 minutes and i've got 600 plus on three coons and these guys are done 
they they's like <laughs> don't don't turn that dog <laughs> loose no more. It's getting embarrassing. So we get in the truck and I'm thinking, man, there's you know, this is Friday or Saturday night. They had hunts all week and three fifty, four hundred yeah. had been high score and I'm thinking, there's no way six hundred won't get in the final four. No way. So I stopped shouldn't tell this but anyhow you know i stopped and i asked these guys i was like hey are y'all gonna make me keep hunting her i said they're gonna think we're cheating when i come back with 12 13 1400 plus you know they're going and they's all like no nah, man let's just let's just leave the time running don't don't turn her loose no more you've got enough to get in we're done so that's what we do we jack around we went got something to eat jack around i roll in there about 30 minutes before deadline you know my chest stuck out so, <laughs> we can go in here and pop this scorecard yep. down you know i walk in there and i throw it down and i get to look and i'm whoa i'm not where i need to be <laughs> and it winds up i wound up about sixth place that night. no kidding and uh it it kind of served me right <laughs> on the other hand i was thinking wow these guys do know how to cheat yeah, that's right <laughs> I mean, I had 600 on three kings that was actually treed yeah. at Smithland, Kentucky, and I got in sixth or seventh. It's like, wow. That's some autumn oak stuff there. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the day. I didn't let that happen no more. <laughs> they'd, come in, they'd come in with 1850, 2150 back then. They've got that cleared up now, I think. I think the scores are usually pretty normal now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the one thing I liked about the legacy hunt. Yeah. Is all you had to do is win your cast. You yeah. didn't have to worry about so and so over here hunting in a zoo and you're in yeah a, that is one thing i like about pro classics and the pro hunts back when they were big you know and that's another thing i miss is the pro hunts because back when i first started back then three hundred dollars you paid three hundred dollars or 250 dollars for an entry fee it was just like holy cow them were my favorite hunts. yeah and I you hated. got you got to the local guys got to hunt against the big timers and you know they could scrape up couple hundred bucks or whatever and hunt and get some of the best dogs in the world and them locals will beat your brains out doing it too i hated to see the pro hunts get yeah. done the way they did of course there again guess what we did we started changing stuff. yeah the best hunt we had going other than the super stakes we went to changing and guess what we no longer it's have gone it. but now as far as the dogs them two right there zip three and wild time uh I didn't own either one of them. Yeah. The man, if I had one of them in my truck right now, I was gonna. I, I was, could probably keep up a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask you, and I was gonna ask you this earlier in the podcast. What all have you won yet? Oh, I don't know. I won the three super stakes, the PKC. I won the Futurity. Uh, I've won the Nationals bunch of state hunts pro hunts uh won the chkc little royal hunt yeah one year i forgot 20, about that you paid twenty thousand. Yeah. i won the chkc pup hunt uh have you ever been in the finals of pkc world no not even close really that's that hunt that hunt is my jinx that's a lot of people's jinx uh last year i got the top 18 with job mm -hmm. uh one year i did get in the top eight with thrasher and i withdrew winning the cast why he was getting close to a highway and i just i'd rather have my dog and win the world hunt i don't know i don't know i never liked any of mine that much uh, <laughs> at that time he was <laughs> you know i don't know I, i'd do it all over again yeah uh but it was it was one of them deals you either make the decision now or he's probably gonna be dead so yeah. i went and caught him well you got a shot this year with jock i like jock he does good in sale yeah, yeah. Uh, i like jock i don't know we me and him's got second to nationals uh we got the top 10 in nationals i think it's top 18 in the world hunt up there so yeah you guys are on a roll we got a couple more shots oh yeah, yeah. He's still, what, just turned five? Just turned five. Oh, yeah. And I haven't hunted him 
I hadn't pushed him. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people think I have, but I've kind of picked my spots with him. And that's that's one thing. Uh, you see a lot of these guys, if you're going to go to hunts all the time like some of these guys do, you need to have two or three dogs. And most of them do. Yeah, most yeah, of these guys even more that are going all the time, they got two or three dogs. Yeah. They got one that works better in the summer. Yeah. One that in the winter or – but that way when you got one if you're honest with yourself and you know your dog's holes yep which most people aren't no and we've talked about that before you don't you got to uh, if you're going to compete at this level you better know what your dog is and you better be honest with it about it you better oh, be yeah. honest about you, it you've got to and you got to know where where to carry your dog to yep. his strength and well i'm not going to lebanon kentucky because <laughs> I couldn't win. I ain't ever owned a dog that could win down there. And they got a pro sport hunt coming down there at the end of August. They're by Strickland's place. And we took rain down there and shock and sent last year to that PKC hunt down there. And it's just not their country. There's no sense of us taking them down there. Yeah. That's what we got. We we can't win there. And I, I've said the same thing about Shawneetown, <laughs> too. <laughs> and we made the mistake of going out there and got our brakes beat in. You got to, I mean you got to pick where your dog does good yeah uh i don't you know a good dog will win a lot of places but if you're going to try to consistently win you need to pick your best spots well one thing about this is a business now you know it is and you can't throw away sixty five hundred dollars at a place where you got a ten percent chance of winning your cast that goes back to those two dogs that i mentioned though yeah if i had one of them two yep. in my truck yep i wouldn't care i can't keep up in the hills a whole lot anymore but i wouldn't care if they had it in lebanon kentucky or in egypt yep if i had one of them two in the back of my truck but and they's having a big hunt but you look at all them dogs that you've had your hands on over the years some of the greatest dogs to ever draw a breath <laughs> And those are the only two that you would do that with. Those are the two that stick yeah. out in my mind. Exactly. So, I mean, that's rare. Uh, <laughs> I've had some. I've hunted for people that won a lot. Like I, the I not female yeah. that Al had. I mean, good Lord, how much did that dog win? Yeah. But And me and him talked about it. Uh, me and Al, he's one of my best friends. But there was no comparisons to her in wild time. I wish Al would get back at it again. Yeah. He's fun to have in a cast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I miss me and him used to have. Oh, when he first moved down here, he uh, I used to aggravate him. He was used to hunting little blocks of woods, mm-hmm. you know. And he was lost from the time he got out of the truck until <laughs> you got him back to the truck. <laughs> he didn't have Garmin back then. I'd, we'd, I'd say, man, when you come out, just take this little road or you know walk out to the edge and i'll drive around and pick you up you know and it's just different he was yeah. used to hunting northern ohio yeah. and we was hunting big bottoms over there it was it was different for him and dogs yeah know? they do they it's it's hard to adjust to big, big woods we talked about that with zach where most of these dogs from where i'm from are used to edges yes. and having an edge well you get down here and you turn loose in some of this there's no edge yeah you know and that's we can hunt rain where there's no edges but we can't take scent somewhere yeah you know she needs an edge she wants to get out and go and it seems like you turn loose in these big blocks of woods with a dog that ain't used to it they're gonna struggle it, they they absolutely do yeah. uh but there again i mean you know like wild time she come out of canada yeah this is where uh al and larry bought her from so and that I, that is a dog that literally could probably treat coon anywhere. <laughs> she, uh, I mean, I think Al had to work on her some yeah. little stuff, you know. Uh, I think she stayed in the ground a lot when yeah. he got her or something or another. But man, I know when I he asked me one time, Thrasher was. I think I had just won the one year old Super Stakes with him, and he, I don't know if he's his oldest boy or his, he just won the World Hunt with Wild Time. And we'd hunted a little bit together, and he asked me one time, he said, man, would you be interested in hunting her some? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You betcha. And uh, I remember he called me one time. The first time he called me to 
man I, he said i ain't gonna be on the hunt for two or three weeks can you can you come get her and i was like man where's she at that's the only question i wanted to know <laughs> and uh i wish he had another one yeah <laughs> i bet al does too he'd probably be back out there he would probably hunt a little yeah. bit if he had another wild time i know the last time i drew al we were in the late round on thursday night at the world hunt and everybody's you know how the late round thursday nights are jeremy my brother says they ought to send an armed security guard in every late round on the thursday night cast and uh but we had it was me and al and jeff stollard and sean shanks was hunting b for joe dawn and we'd had a good cast now stollard and al had talked this judge into hearing the shot nine who were like 13 miles away with a 40 mile an hour wind at her back but there ain't nothing i can do about that they done a good job handling their dog and coursing the judge up there to where they could finally hear him and i'm treat again and uh but i've took some minus i've treated coon took some minus and i'm treat again there's times running down we're walking the nines tree and if nine has this coon he's at 200 but if i have this coon over here then i'm at 225 it ain't gonna matter there's six or seven minutes left and we're shining out his tree well i'm gonna be a nice guy and i'm gonna squall this coon and i'm gonna see it you know and i'm gonna find this coon for al because that nine's only made one tree in an hour and 52 minutes you know i ain't worried about him tree in another one and i can hear con in there about another 600 past him just tree in every breath and i'm pretty sure he's got a coon so i ain't worried i blow this coon squaller we find it judge sees it coon jumps out walks his minute trees it again with about two minutes left <laughs> in a bush right in front of us <laughs> and he said thanks he goes is that squalor for sale <laughs> <laughs> i about wanted i wanted to strangle al and puke at the same time <laughs> i remember years ago uh was in a cast and ronnie nickens was in the cast and I was killing time trying to kill a hunt. Mm-hmm. And Nickens is wanting to get off of this tree. You know, and I'm just killing time. I know yeah. there ain't a coon here. And uh, I'm just killing time over here squalling. Like, and, we've, uh, and I've done made up my mind there's no coon in this tree, so I'm just going to kill this time and knock his dog down for a little mm-hmm. bit of hunting time, you know. So I've feet on this tree i squalled about six and a half minutes this little old guy in a cast walks around there and says here he is <laughs> and beats me <laughs> if you just let him take a circle and move if on, i'd have let him take guess. a circle or no <laughs> but i'm killing time and yeah sometimes we outhandle ourselves <laughs> i've always said that you know uh and I tell some of these younger guys, don't think. Yeah. Every time I get to thinking, I usually do something stupid. Well, if I'm on my second or third scenario of what I got to do to win this cast, usually I've already made too many mistakes. I'm two scenarios past what I needed to be thinking about. Exactly. Main thing is know that dog. Know you know. You you got to know what you need in yeah. certain situations. But man, when you get to thinking, playing them scenarios out in your head, I always mess up. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. I remember late round to world hunt one time. I had Casey Stollard, and uh, we're walking to Image, who's tree deep. And Duds has treated a couple of coons. Image has treated a couple of coons, but he treated a possum and left it when we got there. So he took some minus. And he took another 50 pump that I'd forgot about when the six had caught him. I'd forgot all about it. <laughs> and I'd, I haven't looked at the card. You know, I'm just running the numbers through my head, and we're walking. There's eight seconds left to go in this cast, and I tree Duds running like a mile away. And I said, Judge, you hear me? Ronnie Keene was judging. I said, Judge, you hear me? He goes, yeah. He said, tree Duds. And Casey turns around and goes, what in the F are you doing? I said, well, you got me beat on a tiebreaker if you have this coon. I got a tree. And he goes, I'm still down 50 if I have this coon, you idiot. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, he's almost out of here, and we're walking away from him. Uh, he's got plenty of time to tree a coon in that general direction, and you know I still get him treed in. I'm not, I'm worried now, and I'm cussing myself up and down. We go back to where we last heard him, and he's treed, but he's about three quarters of a mile right-handed from where I treed him. I said, "You got me right there." In case he goes, "Oh no, 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 no," <laughs> <laughs> because that ain't where you treed that dog. Uh, so yeah, you can overthink it every now and then as a handler. <laughs> it, it happens. I don't care how many casts you've hunted in you you get to thinking too much usually bad things happen you're right 
You got any other advice or wisdom before we shut this thing down, Steve? I've really enjoyed talking to you. No, man. I just appreciate you having me on yeah. here. and uh, Hope I get to hunt a few more years well, anyhow. Yeah, well, I hope you do too. I think you and Jock got some good years in front of you. Yeah. It just... Uh, Maybe we'll get something a little better next time. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Well, I'll tell you what: if you ever get tired of him, or you can't get get around good enough, I know a place where where a guy will hunt him. <laughs> Man, you'd quit. <laughs> <laughs> that would go ahead and put an end to your hunting career. We wouldn't be had... friends anymore. Is what no, you you'd be mad. I remember. Uh, Jody Slosher from up in Ohio, man, he used to come down and hunt every winter. Mm-hmm. And he always had good dogs. He had white trash. He had a rebel dog. He had, he always had a good dog. Yeah. And I remember a couple of different times he had trash and he had rebel. I'd tell my brother Randy, I was like, man, if he'll price that dog, I'm going to buy him. And Randy's like, well, we'll buy him if you want to, you know. And we were down in Tennessee one night and rebel hadn't looked the best and jody was a cussing him and anyhow it was a long night we get back to the truck and i was like jody what do you take for that dog man he sits over there i thought hey i'm gonna get this dog (laughs) he sits about five minutes he ain't said nothing and i reached over there and i hand him a checkbook and i said what do you want for that dog jody and he said man steve he said menu's been friends a long time he said, if I was to sell you this dog, he said, you'll hate me forever. <laughs> <laughs> and he meant it. Yep. He said, you'll hate me forever. He said, you're only thinking about the good things. He said, you're not thinking about all the nights that I lay out there with this dog, and he does this and he does that. So The, be- I- the best handlers in the world, I've always said I don't like their dogs very much because they've seen all the bad. You know, when we get them polished up and take them to a cast and they look good, everyone says, ooh, and oh, that's a good dog. And that's the, yeah, they don't realize what it took to get that dog at that place at that time. <laughs> they never see those nights that you're out there laying around thinking, what am I doing out yeah. here? What is, what is this dog? Yeah, you've hunted with my dogs. You know I've had a bunch of them. <laughs> a bunch of nights like that. Man, I've, I don't know. I've laid out there before and think, man, what am I doing? But I've always said this. If I'm going to a big hunt, me and you hunt on two or three nights before it, I want my dog to have the worst night of his life. Jed's the same way. Jed's the same way. I'm not. I want him looking good for about a month before I go there. (laughs) I'll say this, and then we'll get off here. I remember years ago talking about dogs looking good before a hunt. Mm -hmm. Me and Ronnie Bone go to Ohio to a pro hunt. And he had he had Annie, and I had a female, a lipper named Liplock Kate that had won a bunch of stuff. Yeah. We go up and we hunt with Kurt Seibert. We're gonna hunt with Kurt four or five nights in a row. We're gonna get ours used to Northern Ohio, you know. Kurt had a little plot dog he called Rowdy. It was Sarge two or three, one of them. He beat us so bad. <laughs> every night kurt would hunt till about midnight or so and he had to work the next day mm-hmm. he you know hunt here hunt there whatever and by midnight you couldn't add it if we was in a hunt you couldn't add our scores together and beat him <laughs> i mean it was we could have hunted the rest of the night and not beat old sarge and uh, anyhow i remember it comes down to thursday night and Kurt tells me and Ronnie, he said, I'm not going to hunt tonight. I've got mine where I need him to be. He said, you guys need to be hunting. <laughs> <laughs> and we're agreeing with him. Yeah. We've got, oh, man. Yeah. Our dogs have looked terrible all week, and we're up there in the coon capital of the world mm-hmm. probably. So anyhow, Friday night, we go to the pro hunt. Me and Ronnie get in early. Kurt gets beat early and gets beat late. And then we wind up. I think Bone gets first in the hunt, and I get second. <laughs> <laughs> and his dog, has, I mean, his dog has destroyed yeah. us all week long. Yep. But when it come time for the hunt, he didn't perform. Well, Ricky Hawkins come up. He used to come up every spring when the Russ, when Russ had his hunt, Russ Meyer, and we'd hunt all week. We turkey hunt all day, hunt all night. 
we'd sleep from about one in the afternoon till dark every day you know we'd do it for about a week straight and he had Cabo and Susie and at that time I just had an old nine-year-old dog out of I think he was out of Skip or something voodoo I called him this was as common a dog as could be and he just annihilates Cabo and Susie all week long and I'm giving Ricky a hard time I'm saying you know because back then that was a $6,500 entry that was unheard of yeah I was telling Ricky, you know, I said, you know, if you want to borrow voodoo, I'll cut you in on half, you know, and I'm just, I'm just riding him all week long. And he goes over there and gets in every single night and them dogs put up huge scores. And I don't think, I think Cabo finally treated a coon on third or Wednesday and he'd been up there for six nights. I don't know if the dog ever treated a coon until Wednesday. And then he goes out there, he gets caught or gets Susie in Thursday and then trees like four early and four late with Cabo in the <laughs> on friday and wins the whole thing so yeah it's it's different people don't understand it happens i mean uh sometimes the dog can do the best in the world and you get the wrong breaks or yeah but i don't know sometimes you win when you should lose and a lot of times you lose when you should win hawk if you're listening to this i still think you should have hunted voodoo <laughs> <laughs> That was probably one of them times he beat me up there. At it may have been. Uh, may be. And there's another guy I wish we'd get back into it. I always enjoyed hunting with Ricky. Yep. There's a lot of them that's got out yeah. of it. I look back on it. We had a lot of fun hunting against yeah. one another. Yep. It was back to that. We always try to beat one another's brains out, but when yep. the hunt was over with, we was all friends. That's right, and that's the way it's supposed to be. All right, Steve. I appreciate you sitting down. We've been at it a while. We're going to shut her down, but we're going to get you on here again sometime. Definitely before next year's Youth Nationals, we're going to do a big blow-up promo podcast on every network we can get it on and, and get them kids over there. So. Sounds good, man. I'll be looking forward to it. All right. Appreciate it, Steve. And thank you guys for listening to the Houndsman XP Podcast. This is Josh Michaelis, and we'll see you next week.